Uh, a video showing a Spanish women's football team attempting a haka by leaping in the air and slapping their thighs before dissolving into laughter has led to a request for FIFA women's World Cup teams to respect Māori culture. The video was taken at Spain's first practice in New Zealand before the FIFA Women's World Cup kicks off on July 20 and aired on Spain's social media channels before they took it down. Dr Jeremy Harpeta is a senior lecturer in Māori physical education and health at the University of Otago and was one of the co-authors of a paper about the commodification of Māori rituals in sport and he joins us now. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koe, Will. Manoa te ao matariki. Thanks, brother. Listen, tell me, what did you make of the video? The temptation is to say thanks very much. Now get out. <laughs> uh, firstly, as a sports fan watching it, a uh, fan of women's sport and women in sport, um, I guess at that superficial level as a sports fan, it might be perceived as a bit of harmless fun between a, um, a bunch of young women who are pretty excited about being here in Aotearoa, New Zealand for this FIFA Women's World Cup. So. So at one level, I, I get that um, people may perceive that it's you know, simply uh, a group of ladies having some fun. However, um, as an academic, our job is to be the critic and conscience of society. And from that particular lens, thinking about that act more critically, um, yeah, raising awareness about the, the more profound impacts that that kind of um, behaviour can have for uh, First Nations uh, people in Australia and also Indigenous Māori here in Aotearoa, um, it's yeah, it can come across as belittling or trampling upon our mana as mana whenua. When you watch it, you basically feel like crap. You've kind of co-authored a report about this. What's the harm done by people doing this? I mean, oh, clearly there's no physical harm, and uh, but there's potential harm psychologically, um, potentially trauma triggering for for some Māori to to see their tonga treated in with such disregard um, for the mana that it has as a cultural ritual. Um, clearly, I don't speak for all Māori on that, um, but for for some iwi, uh, that that could be uh, triggering for them uh, psychologically speaking. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely um, trampling on our mana as, as Māori, I believe. Um, it's kind of like we've rolled it, we've welcomed, opened our door to them, rolled out the whero whariki, the red carpet, and they've walked into our whare with their dirty, filthy football boots on and, and uh, wiped their uh, mud all over our, our whariki. I'm going to try and play devil's advocate here, right? And I'm going to ask you about the fact that a day or two before all of this goes down, we get a press release from FIFA saying the Tenoranga Teretanga flag and the Aboriginal flag will fly in Australia and how important this is and all this kind of stuff, yet then they go and, and they're so proud of it and they love it so much and it's a great marketing opportunity and we all write it up. But yet these teams arrive and do something like this and that says to me, it is the commodifying of Te Ao Māori because were none of these players given a bit of a yarn about tikanga? Was no, was no one watching or anything? I mean, is, is, is this the issue here? Well, there's certainly a miscommunication issue, I believe. Um, I know that FIFA put together a uh, advisory group of wahine from Aotearoa, New Zealand, as well as a, a few from uh, Australia as well, Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander women over, over in Australia, um, who have been working with FIFA on um, cultural ceremonies, pre-match rituals that they're going to do from an Australian perspective. Um, perhaps welcome to country, similar to what we see in rugby. Um, so I know that, that FIFA have been working closely with that cultural expert advisory group um, on things like the flags and ensuring that uh, indigeneity has a presence at this tournament. However, yeah, there seems to be a, a disconnect between what FIFA are trying to uh, celebrate throughout this tournament and what how teams are interpreting uh, the messaging coming through from them. So, um, and a polite reminder, um, just to raise the awareness, I think this has created an opportunity uh, to have the conversation around 
treating um, not not on eggshells, but delicately, um, just just moving carefully through our space. So it's a long time, but last um, part I for you would be, how do they fix it? If you were advising them and they've done this, they know it's a mess, obviously, they've taken it down, how do you fix it? Oh, first and foremost, I would say that they were bold enough to um, post it publicly. They should be brave enough to apologise publicly as well. Um, that would go some way to repairing the, the damage that they've caused. Um, so that would be a nice starting point. And to get on board with uh, the the work that FIFA are trying to do. I mean, uh, Dr Jeremy Harpeter, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. Namahi. Kia ora.